Hello everyone, this is uh, Damien with Beginner's Java. Um, and today we're going to be going over uh, how to uh, use GitHub in the simplest way uh, possible. Um, I'm going to be using GitHub a lot for these lessons and hopefully uh, it doesn't become too confusing for anybody. Um, I'm going to be omitting this part from the beginning of any uh, lesson that I show you guys, but in the event that you actually need to uh, put something on Git, it's pretty easy to do uh, just through the IntelliJ user, interfa user interface. Um, so all you need to do is you uh, grab this quick setup, you just grab the URL here, uh, you come into git, you go to VCS, uh, import into version control, um, and there's the option to share project on GitHub. Um, I've actually not done this a ton of times before, uh, so let's see if it gives me the option of uh, doing it but I'm not sure. So if I log in... Yeah, okay, so it actually just lets me do it that way. Um, so I'll do that. It's not private, and we'll just say lesson one of beginners Java. Okay, and then we'll write some code... What? Oh, fuck. I already made the repository while I was just in the UI. Um, okay, so it's going to ask me what I want to save. I don't want to save any of these idea files or the IML file. just want to save the Java file. Um, and I'll hit OK. And after I do that, it will be saved nice and securely uh, right here, I think. So it'll give us the source folder and the lesson folder and our file still currently empty. Um, so you might be asking yourself, um, why am I showing you guys Git before I've shown you Java? And the answer is because this series is targeted at getting you a job. Um, that is the first and most important thing. Uh, and pretty much everywhere uses Git now. So, okay. Um, let's start. Here is a blank Java file. Um, this first so in Java, everything is a class. Uh, all your files are classes. Pretty much everything is, is a class. Now, the name of this class is lesson one. Public means that anything can read it. So pretty simple. Uh, our first line of code is going to be very intimidating. And unfortunately, I'm not going to tell you too much about what it means. Um, we'll go over it later on, but for now you're going to just have to trust me. It's public, static, void, main, string, args. And I promise the rest of Java is not nearly as ugly as that one line, but that one line is pretty ugly. Uh, the one thing you should take away from this is this is our main function. This is the entry point for our program. This is where it all begins. Um, this is where it all starts. So, okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, just kind of as an homage to every programmer that's ever existed, is just do a simple hello world. And we do that just by typing system.out.println hello world. Cool. Simple, right? So, once I do that, the way for us to actually run something is by going to run, and there will be a run dot 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 option, and it will give us options. There's edit configurations, which is if you ever have a, uh, a single method that might need to be run separately. We don't. We just want to run lesson one, which contains main. And when we run it, a little window is going to pop up, and when the window pops up, we see here, hello world. Um, somewhere around lesson 10 or so, we'll get into how to run your programs 
outside of IntelliJ, but for now, let's, let's focus on the learning. Um, so what exactly happened right here? So the system.out.println method um, takes a, a string. So a string is just some words contained within quotes. And you can put anything you want here. You can put uh, numbers, you can put special characters, you can put anything other than a backslash. Um, and you can put a backslash in as long as there's two of them. Um, and we'll get into why that is in a few minutes. But if I were to run the same thing, it would run no problem, and it will just have all these ugly characters there. Um, so, okay, cool. We'll just leave that as, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll leave it like that, and I'll comment it out. Um, so what this these two slashes at the beginning of a line means is that you and I, coders, uh, can still see what's there, but when the program is run, it ignores it. So it's just a comment. It's something for, for coders to read. So when the program gets run, it actually doesn't get included. Um, it, it just gets stripped out. So, all right, great. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about is uh, what types of variables we, we have in Java and what I mean by variable. So a variable is just a, a simple uh, named object that will store a value. So the way that I like to, to talk to students about this is a variable is x in mathematics, right? It's, it's what is the value of x. Um, so in this case, if we were to say in x equals 0, then that's all it is. Uh, an integer is a number. Um, x is what we named it, and it equals 0. And we can name this anything. We can name this item quantity. We can say uh, int number sold. You know, and, and we can set this value to pretty big numbers. Uh, that might be a little too big. Yeah, we can set it to pretty big numbers. Um, and there's no, there's not a lot of rules to ints other than that the number has to be uh, larger than about, or smaller than about 1.4 billion. Um, and that will vary sometimes. So, okay, cool. Um, aside from ints, uh, ah, so actually, let me, let me show you something fun. Um, so, if we try to do a number with a decimal point, it tells us that we should use a double instead. So a double is just another number that can support uh, just numbers with decimal places. So if we say double uh, money paid equals 4.99, then cool. It's a totally legitimate amount. Um, so if you're ever going to be using uh, decimals or, you know, you think your number might need a decimal, which is actually a lot more common than you think. I, I find that in a lot of uh, real-life cases, I, I seem to use int uh, a bit lesser than I use double. Uh, the only case where I don't is when I'm using a counter. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of covered the numbers, how about letters? So if we have a single letter, we can have a character. And I'll just name my character C. And I want that to represent the letter C. And actually, let's just change this to my character um, to avoid confusion. So again, this is a character named my character, and its value is C. 
So now just to show you guys a few things, we'll do a system.out.print, just like earlier, and say uh, we have uh, item quantity on hand, we sold. Uh, number sold, um, new customer paid, each, and just to show you that we can do a, a little bit uh, of, of computation inside of our print statement. Um, which comes to the total of mental do plus. Uh, there we go. Nope, it's number sold times by money paid. Cool. And then we'll just say skip to the next line. Oops. And, oops, wow, what a mess I am. Um, and we'll say, and the transaction code is, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll change the name of this to like trans code or transaction code. Even though that doesn't actually mean anything. Cool, and then we'll just run this statement, and it's going to be exactly what you think it is. Um, so we have zero of whatever our imaginary product is on hand. We sold nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. The customer paid for four dollars and ninety-nine cents each, which comes to the total of blah. And the transaction code is so with just one little line of code and and a few things. Uh, you know, we, we output a, a pretty long string. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, each time we have quotes like this, we're just telling the print method, output exactly what I say. But whenever we want to do something like item quantity, if we just put it in here, like, it's going to say exactly that. It's going to say item quantity. It's not going to know that we mean our, our variable. So the way we do that is we put another quotation mark, followed by a plus, and followed by item quantity. Now, after we say item quantity, we wanted to continue talking uh, in, in that same line. So we put another plus, and then we have another set of quotes here. And everything we say in the quotes is exactly what's there. So we said on hand, comma, we sold. And, and it is space sensitive, so it's all the spaces that we have there. So then we have plus, and it, it repeats itself a few times. And so if you ever get to the end of a string and you end it in a variable, you don't need another plus here. As a matter of fact, you can't have another plus here um, because plus means that we're going to be adding something else, which we're not. So another way that we could have done this is like this, string str, uh, and, and we'll call it daily report equals and we're going to grab this whole thing. And we'll try that. And then we'll just change this whole thing to just be daily report. And once we do that, we get the exact same output, but it's all stored in this one variable. Now, as a final thing that I'm going to do in this, um, just because I want to give you guys as much information as I can in one video, 
Um, actually, I'll, I'll do two more things. Um, I'm going to just show you guys how you can add on to a string. So if I take daily report, and I want to just add on to the end, um, I can do that by just saying daily report plus equals, and I'll just add on at the end, and my name is Damien. Or let's say, and Damien was the cashier. Whatever. Um, so if I run the same thing, I'm going to have added on to that string that we made. And all a string is, is is just a set of quotes with some words in it. In this case, I add a lot of different stuff to a string. Um, so another example of a string is hello world, just like we started off with. So that's just a simple string. This is a much harder string. Um, and so what's happening here with this plus equals is we're saying it's actually the same thing as saying daily report equals daily report plus and Damien was the cashier. So it actually means the same thing, except we don't have to type this. So the only other thing that I wanted to get to before we stopped here is there's one more variable type that we'll be using pretty frequently, and it's called boolean. Um, and we're just going to call this one uh, boolean truth, and we're going to set it equal to true. Now, it's all a boolean is is a true or false value. So we'll, we'll have another one, boolean lie equals false. And we'll just do a quick system.out.println truth. And the same thing for lie. All right. So when we print that out, uh, oops, uh, that should have just one more thing. Um, so when I put backslash n on the end of this, what that actually means is that we're going to now have a blank line after the word cashier. Um, it's a little bit of a, a quick hack. And we'll go over, so this is called an escape code. I'll go over escape codes in the next video or two. So we end up with true and false at the end, um, which correlates to these two lines and these two values. So I'll add a few more comments in here. And so this is going to be kind of your first little taste of what Java looks like and what Java is. and how we interact with just outputting some simple values. Um, and again, this, this wasn't exactly a simple value. So we'll get a bit more into strings and how to manipulate them in the next video. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Damien, and have a good one.